As the race for the FIFA presidency continues to gather pace, presidential candidate Prince Ali bin Al Hussein has been in Zimbabwe to meet with government and sports officials there in an effort to rally support. The Jordanian prince, who is seeking Africa's backing, is one of three challengers hoping to bring an end to incumbent Seb Blatter's seven years at the helm of the world football governing body. Africa makes up 54 of the 209 member countries that will vote in the Zurich election on May 29th. The prince will be in Cairo next week to attend the Confederation of African Football's General Assembly meeting that will also be attended by fellow presidential contenders Michael Van Prague, Louis Figo and Blatter himself. Let's get more on this story by speaking to Zimbabwean sports journalist Ponga Liwewe. Ponga, how was Prince Ali received by the Zimbabwean FA Chief Emerson Nagwagwa and Sports Minister Andrew Langa? Yes, football is a very formal environment and of course visiting a foreign head of state and we have to also acknowledge that beyond football the, the prince who is the the son of King Hussein of Jordan would obviously be accorded uh, the sort of respect that he deserves both for his achievements as a FIFA vice president, but also for his non-football standing. So the reception has been uh, very, very well, and he has received all the protocols due to him for both his positions. Blatter is obviously an African stronghold. Can Prince Ali persuade CAF to switch their support to him? I think it will be very difficult. You you have to look at the fact that even when an African football uh, head has stood for the elections, when, when Issa Hayatu stood against Seb Blatter, his own house was divided. So you can imagine how difficult it will be for the prince who, of course, uh, is, is relatively new in the game of football, who is relatively young in terms of football leadership terms. All those factors work against him. And of course, Africa has benefited from the tenure of Seb Blatter we look at uh, projects such as the Goal Project, which brought in so much funding. All the other, uh, all the other resources that have been brought into the game of football, particularly for Africa, to to strengthen Africa's hand, to to put it almost on a, on a higher footing. So, Seb Blatter has been 100% for Africa throughout his his tenure. He brought Africa's first World Cup. He's recognised for for having played a big role in that. So, all those things work against the prince in this case. So the continent is obviously key battleground for all the candidates, Michael Van Praag, Louis Figo and Blatter as well? 100% because you are, you're talking about uh, 54 uh, different federations, all of them carrying a vote. And, and really, when you look at the, the 204 plus members of FIFA, that's roughly a quarter. So if you do well in the African battleground, it gives you a, a good standing. And I think Seb Blatter saw that in 1998 because he, he had a strong focus on his campaign in Africa when he first won the presidency. And he's always maintained a good relationship with the continent thereon. What will Africa want to see from all the candidates? Obviously, funding is, is a very important factor because Africa lags in terms of resource, in terms of uh, facilities, and uh, of course, in terms of administration. So the funding for courses, the funding for infrastructure, those are areas that, that Blatter has been strong on. And obviously, any candidate who wishes to challenge the uh, president of FIFA will have to come in uh, bearing gifts and uh, benefits for the African continent. Uh, Blatter has become an expert in, in handing out these sort of, uh, of benefits for Africa. So it will be really, really difficult for anyone coming in, and there will have to be some unique thinking and some uh, uh, maybe level of thinking that may show the African continent that there are huge benefits if they support the other candidates. And finally, corruption has been a predominant issue in FIFA recently. How will Prince Ali hope to tackle this? Yes, I think FIFA's image over the last couple of years has, has really received huge blows from the different issues, uh, the buying of votes for the World Cup and so many other issues. And I think that's one thing that works to his advantage in that he can uh, present himself as a candidate who will uh, clean the house, as a candidate who will uh, make sure that FIFA takes a different direction from what it has uh, currently. And obviously, he will want to show that uh, a new broom will sweep the football house in a different way. Ponga Lewewe, thank you for speaking to us.
Elsewhere in the competition, South Africa's Orlando Pirates take a 2-1 lead to Kampala, where they will face the Uganda Revenue Authority on Saturday. The hosts are looking to overturn the deficit to get past the Buccaneers. Ugandan side Uganda Revenue Authority will be meeting South Africa's Orlando Pirates on Saturday for the return leg of the first round CAF Confederation Cup matches. During their training session, the team captain expressed confidence that they are physically ready for the clash against the South African Giants. URA suffered a 2-1 defeat at the hands of the Buccaneers during the first leg of the two-match playoffs which was held in South Africa. The Ugandan coach admitted to a defensive lapse in that game. Despite enjoying a comfortable 2-0 victory over AC Victoria in the Ugandan Super League on Tuesday, the coach still has his doubts about his striking force. Everybody. URA has lost two key strikers in Frank Kalanda and Peter Luasa to injury. URA need to beat the Buccaneers by at least one goal to nil to progress to the second round. Orlando Pirates are the only South African team to have won the CAF Champions League, which they did in 1995. They are one of South Africa's most popular teams and boast of a massive support base. There will also be CAF Champions League action taking place on Friday. Senegal's Pekin have a mountain to climb after losing the first leg 5-1 to USM Algier in Algeria. Another Algerian side, Anton Satif, are at home to Banjul of Gambia. That game is tied at one all. On Saturday, Carlo Pillows will have it all to do in Nigeria after losing 4-0 in Morocco to Maghreb Tetuan. Angola's Cabo's call will also have to use the home advantage to overturn a 2-0 deficit to Sudan's El Merek. Malian of Mali host Mango Sport of Gabon and lead 3-1 from the first leg. Egypt's Al Ahli will host APR of Rwanda. The Egyptians have a 2-0 advantage from the first leg. Blessed with world-class facilities many African countries can only dream of, South Africa's young talent should be reaping the benefits. But instead, too few ITF future events on the local tour make it difficult for unranked players to get opportunities to enter tournaments to earn crucial points to climb up in the rankings. World-class tennis facilities like these may be producing an occasional champion, but a lack of financial support for the sport is stunting the country's ability to compete on the international circuit. And that situation is even more problematic in other African countries where tennis infrastructure is not always available, let alone funding. Look, I think, you know, we've got a lot of challenges, you know, uh, uh, where we are in, in, in South Africa and specific Africa. You know, tennis is what we can so-call a rich man sport you know you you know to develop a professional tennis player you know is a lot of money and um, uh, we've got the talent you know we've got uh, a lot of players from from various backgrounds right, that's playing the game in South Africa local players often struggle with their careers when they turn professional and it becomes too expensive to fund their careers from South Africa oh I love playing in my own country in South Africa all the people around I know it's better than playing overseas and I think it's nice to be home in your home country. I love it in Poch. The, the venue is really nice. Yeah, Drian. 
Um, the courts are playing really nice, the balls are nice, the weather is hot but it's nice. I like the sun, I like playing here. But given the few domestic tournaments in the country, players have to focus on international circuits which again involves finance. The International Tennis Federation has got a circuit all around the world which um, uh, circuit all around the world where um, you know players compete like they do on a professional circuit obviously it's now not professional so it's not for money but they all compete to get points and then the major goal is, is to reach uh, the Grand Slam tournaments the Junior Wimbledon uh, Junior French Open. The abolishment of the South Africa Tennis Open in 2011 is a strong indication of how much more the sport needs to be supported if it is to get back onto a growth trajectory. And that's all we have time for on Sports News Africa for today. Join us again tomorrow when we will bring you all the latest from Africa and around the world. Bye for now.